Have a great class. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're going to be drawing and coloring a wise owl with Prismacolor Premier colored pencils. Um, I'm a senior graphic designer at Newell Brands. Uh, Newell is known for such awesome brands as, of course, Prismacolor, Sharpie, Papermate, uh, Ball Jars, uh, Coleman, many, many others. Um, once you uh, complete your artwork from today's class, if you want to share it on social media, please uh, tag, tag us at make, hashtag make it with Michaels and also at Prismacolor so we can, we can see your, your beautiful artwork of your wise owl. Um, you, can, you, can, you can see some of my animal artwork. I do a lot of pet portraits. Uh, if you search Facebook, Dan Bloodsaw Pet Portraits, uh, B-L-E-D-S-A-W is my last name, and then on Instagram, Bloodsaw3. Okay, today we are going to draw this beautiful Eurasian eagle owl. Um, and I've got a, a couple of uh, tidbits of trivia about owls that I wanted to share with you that kind of surprised me. Um, a group of owls is called a parliament, which is, was very surprising to hear that. Um, owls can rotate their head 270 degrees. Uh, so they got pretty flexible necks. Um, owls camouflage themselves in trees. And if you look at our Eurasian eagle owl behind me that we're gonna draw, um, it looks like he's got camo on. Um, they have binocular vision. So those, those spooky cool looking eyes can see a long way and they can also see at night. Um, 50 million Americans are bird watchers, which I was surprised to find out. And it's the fastest growing recreational activity in the US. So let's um, switch over to the, uh, the, the drawing table view and I'm gonna introduce you to our supplies today. <clears throat> um, hope you were able to download the, the drawing of the uh, owl and, and print that out to start uh, our coloring with. Um, and I also have a sample of the that I had done previously to show you what we're going to be doing today with the colored pencils, uh, Prismacolor Premier. And then I have also got an image of our wise owl on my tablet so I can um, look at all the details while I'm drawing. A tablet is a great way to um, observe the details while you're drawing birds and animals. Um, and then let's, I'm, let me introduce the uh, Prismacolor pencils that I'll be using today. Um, the first one is Prismacolor Cream. There's some cream color in the, some of the feathers of this owl. Um, I'm gonna be using Prismacolor Black. Um, black is good for the eyes and outlining the eyes. And then uh, it's also good for some of the feathers and the outline of the, of the bird. If you don't have black, you can also use dark brown. Um, one of my favorite pencils is the colorless blender. And so uh, about halfway through after we've applied the midtones, I like to go in with the colorless blender and blend all of the colors together and that creates an amazing painterly effect. Um, and then white is always a popular color um, for lots of the uh, picture. And then 50% French gray is good for the, for the feathers. I notice a lot of gray in this owl. And then the eyes are amazing. They've got that bright orange color. So of course, Prismacolor orange. And then for some of the lighter shades, I picked uh, Prismacolor goldenrod for the orange of the eye. And then for the dark areas, I've got uh, dark umber, which is a dark brown. And then um, light umber for the lighter um, areas of the feathers uh, and different areas around the head. And then also I have, the last one I have here is a Prismacolor beige. Um, some of the feathers look a little beigey. So I also have Prismacolor beige. And then um, Prismacolors aren't really made um, to erase much, but I have a magic rub eraser just in case. Um, so those are all of the, uh, the pencils. We also have a, an Exacto powerhouse sharpener um, I used to use the old fashioned metal kind with the shavings, but uh, um, using the, the Exacto Powerhouse sharpener just makes it a lot faster. 
So let's start off with our black Prismacolor pencil. And let's go in and just start outlining the owl. Let's just go in over that drawing and just kind of follow the drawing and kind of outline the owl just to firm up a little bit of the, the outline of the, of the bird. Look at those tufts on the ears. They look like horns. It's such a cool looking owl, these Eurasian owls. And then the, the top of the head of the owl, just kind of a nice, nice curve there. And then more of the tufted ears. So let's just go in, outline that a little bit, follow that down toward the eyes. And then let's outline the right side of the head. And then we're just gonna fade it off to the right there of the paper. And then now I wanna go in and start, um, let's start adding some of the black around the eyes just to get those going. So if you look at the, um, at the photo we provided, um, those eyes are very piercing and they're very black uh, pupils and outlines. So let's, let's take that black Prismacolor or dark brown if you only have that and go in and just draw the outline around that beautiful round piercing owl eye that can see so well in the dark. Let's uh, go into the pupil, get it nice and round. And then if you look closely at the eye, there's reflections on the right side and the left side. Those reflections give it a lot of a lot of life. So let's just add a little bit of white area. I, I just kind of circle it a little bit so I know where to add my, uh, you can actually have the paper show through or you can also use your white Prismacolor if you accidentally go over that area where the sparkle is. And then let's just go in and outline that V shape that comes down from the forehead. And then it goes up toward the tufted ears. And then there's a lot of black in those tufted ears. We're just going in and we're just filling in that black color. And there's, there's, there's a nice little black spot area right toward the top of the eye. So we're going in and just adding that basic shape then we're gonna, let's just go in and outline the, uh, the beak area. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a ellipse with a point on it. So, and then it kind of has these little protrusions, these little ridges that come in. And then let's go in and then we'll add that other side of the uh, V shape above the right eye. We'll go in and, and outline that eye like we did the other one with the black. So let's get a nice black outline and let's go in and fill in that pupil with black. We're gonna be putting orange inside that, that pupil. They've got beautiful orange eyes. It's one of the reasons I, uh, I selected this owl to paint was the beautiful orange eyes. Um, and then let's go in. We're just gonna go in and fill in a lot of the mid-tone blacks right now before we go in and fill in the other colors. And there's just little areas of black and there's like a pattern of black on the top of the head of the owl. So let's just go in and kind of try to mimic some of those shapes you see. They're just kind of spotted shapes because it's kind of a camo. And um, let's go in and just kind of do some basic black shapes that create those spots. Just some little, you know, hatch lines to give an idea of what that black 
that black shape is and that camouflaged look of the owl. And then there's some shadow underneath to the right of the eye. And then there's, and then there's um, a fur area where it, the, the str each strand comes out next to the um, nose. So let's go in and just add some of those hatch lines just to show where the, where that furry white area is of the owl. And then if we look at the, um, at the overall owl, um, it's got a lot of black in the, the main body of the owl, black spots, just like it has at the top of the head. So let's just go in and try to mimic some of those um, black areas. I, and it's already in the drawing a little bit. You can kind of follow the drawing, um, but there's little black specks. And then there's black spots of where the feathers are. And when these owls fly, they're magnificent creatures. And I learned they don't really make any noise when they fly. So they're very stealth. And they're, they're nighttime hunters. They hunt a lot of mice, field mice. Um, and they can eat as many as a thousand per year. So they're quite the hunters. So let's just go in. Um, I see some specks around here. There's specks to the right of the little feathers that just kind of pop out. And then there's little areas of just, you know, fine lines in this area. And then we're gonna go in and just finish up adding more of these black spots where the feathers are. It really is kind of a camouflage look because when they're in a tree, they can be totally camouflaged where you can hardly see them, um, which, you know, you know, helps with their hunting, I'm sure, because I can't see them coming, those mice. So just go in to each individual feather and we're just trying to mimic the direction. There's like different directions. There's some directions that go to the right, some to the left, some downward. So we're just gonna go in and, and try to, it doesn't have to be exact. You're just trying to get the overall impression of the camouflage. Okay, so now, now we've added a lot of our, our black details. So let's start going in with some color. Um, I think I'm going to start with light umber, um, and let's go in. If, if you look at the owl, um, there is some brown in the feathers. There's brown in this area, brown, you know, on the top of the head and in the, the ears, the tufted ears, and there's brown detailing throughout. So light umber is a perfect color for, for that kind of detail. So let's just go in and let's just start to add some, some, some um, hatch lines just to fill in that color of brown that kind of is a backdrop. And remember, we're gonna go in and blend these colors after we get all the base colors in. So what you're doing right now is you're just trying to fill in some of the basic areas where you see that brown. And the brown is definitely on the, the individual feathers. They, they definitely aren't all black. So let's go into those areas where you see the black and the brown feathers overlapping and just do some hatch lines, cross hatch lines um, where the feathers kind of overlap. And then let's go in with the uh, strokes again, the hatching strokes to the right side, like we did on the left. And just start to get a feel for the color of the owl. It's definitely not white. So we're just trying to fill in those white areas with a nice base color. Okay, and then there's definitely some brown in the ears. And definitely 
brown up here on top of our owl's head. And in this area, I'll probably go in with some dark brown too, which is what we're gonna do next is use the dark brown. Um, and then up here by the, the tufted ears. Uh, and then now that we've done the, um, the light umber, let's go in with the, the dark umber and let's add some of these darker brown details that we see on our owl. And to get that camouflage look, you kind of just need to do some hatch lines, some cross hatch lines, just to get kind of a camouflage pattern that these owls have. And let's go in to the right of the eyes, right and left sides of the eyes, and let's add some details of dark brown. This is not just black or light brown, it's, it's got dark brown too. There's a lot of browns in this Eurasian owl. Hey, Dan, so, we, we, we yes. have a few questions coming through. Yeah. Well, for, yeah, for, ahead, first man. of all, uh, people have been having trouble um, getting um, the outline. And so um, if you could kind of just slow down, we, we've okay, put it in sure. the chat um, just so people can get a little up to speed. Um, okay. yeah. and, and also a question came, came through about sure. um, how much pressure uh, on the pencil you are um, using? Um, I'm not, uh, well, when it comes to the lighter colors, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't press down very hard. I just probably got a medium hard on the pressure. But when it comes to the darker colors like black and dark brown, I, I probably, probably press a little harder because those are really dark. So it just depends on the, the uh, hue of the pencil, um, how hard I press. Great question. Okay, well, Adam, I'll just take my time here. I'm just going in and adding some of these darker brown areas while people get a chance to draw the, the owl. Sorry if you couldn't uh, download the, uh, the drawing. So we'll just take our time going in and adding some of the dark brown lines around the eye. And remember, these are like the darker colors. And then now we're gonna go in with some, some lighter colors. And some of the lighter colors that you see, uh, one of them is beige. So our Prismacolor beige color um, is really nice to show a lot of the, uh, you know, the yellowish tan colors that you see in the camo of, the, uh, of our owl. Um, so, Let's just go in and start to uh, add that beige color that you see there in those feathers. So that light color that's in between the dark browns and blacks is, and there's, there's a lot of white uh, in this area too that we're gonna leave and we're gonna add that too. Uh, but we're gonna go in and just start adding the beige color that you see on the body and you see some of it on the head too. So you see some of that beige color on the head, definitely in this area. Getting a nice drawing is all about getting your lights and your darks and your midtones and your shadows and your highlights. And a lot of the, the really deep shadows we'll do at the end. Um, but right now we're just trying to capture you know, a lot of the mid-tones that we're gonna see. And we'll add more details when we, after we blend the colors. Um, but right now, I'm just going in and adding some of that beige color that I see on our owl. And there's definitely some beige, let me, let me sharpen real quick with our exacto sharpener. So let's go into the sides of the uh, head here and add some of that beige color. It's definitely some beige on each side of the eyes. And a little bit up here 
on the top of the head, maybe by the, the tufted area. So that's the beige. There's also um, there's also some gray, uh, fifty percent French gray. I like French gray because um, in the larger Prismacolor sets, you get a lot of grays, and um, French gray is a gray, but it's also got uh, a brown hue to it. So when we're doing an owl, you definitely see um, some brown grayish hues to the feathers. It's not just brown and it's not just beige, it's also French gray, especially up here at the top of our head where we get these hatch lines. Let's go in with some of that French gray. Up here on the tufted ears. Let's go in, just add a little bit of French gray here and there. It's like in between beige and brown. It's the best way I can describe French gray. Let's go in and just follow those up, follow those previous lines because you're trying to follow the direction of the feathers and the fur of the owl. You're trying to get some of those shapes of the feathers as you as you color. Just think about these little feathered V shapes on the body of the owl. So a lot of those white in between areas that we left, we're going in with the French gray. And at the end, we're gonna add a lot of white and um, highlights in the white areas because there's, um, there's a lot of white areas around the beak. There's some tufted feathers of white right in here and then also all over the head. So that's something that we're gonna do um, coming up here before we blend. So let's go in and around the beak. I see some gray in there. And then um, I think that's about all the gray we're gonna do. And now we're gonna go in and add the uh, orange around the, uh, and the, the pupils of the eyes. So if you look at our, our photo, um, those eyes, those piercing eyes have a lot of very bright orange. And so Prismacolor is great for, for bright colors. Um, that's why this Prismacolor orange is just a perfect bright orange color for our owl. So once you start to get that, that eye color, it starts to bring you know, the bird to life because you can really envision how those pupils look. And just imagine how you know how good these owls are at uh, seeing at night. Okay, so now let's go in with white, Prismacolor white, and let's go in around the. Um, let's go on the beak. We're going to add a little bit of black around there too and blend it later on. But let's go in and just start. See, the nice thing about white is you can almost add details on top of other colors and you can blend them a little bit with the white. So to get that white, soft, feathery look around the beak and to get the details on the beak, I'm gonna go in with that white. And I'm pushing pretty hard with the pressure because um, you're actually kind of blending as you're applying pressure with the white. And we're also going to go in with our blender pencil in a little bit too. But there's a lot of, and if, if you get some uh, wax residue, you can always blow it a little, blow it off. And then um, there's definitely a, a very feathery white area right here on our owl, in the body area. And so let's look how it's blending that, the other colors, and it starts to get to that white. And you know, Prismacolor drawings are, are a lot of a lot of blending and a lot of layering of colors. So we've got white on the side of the head. Let's go in with that. There's definitely some white around the eyes. 
and it blends it. And there's definitely white up here in the tufted area. The very, very tops of the ears. Then there's white around each eye, around the bottom of the eye, and then white, that, that shape on the sides of the head, or you have those fine details, you get white. So let's go in, and then let's add white to uh, blend these feathers more. Because if you look, there's a lot of uh, white on the edges of the feathers. And we're gonna go in soon and use our blender pencil and blend those shapes together of the, of the different feathers to create more of that camouflage look. Um, let me sharpen our pencil with our Exacto Powerhouse sharpener again. It's a great sharpener for using Prismacolor. It's very fast. Um, hey, Dan? Yes. Um, we, we, we have a question. Could you adjust the picture you're referring to um, to just be better, oh, better yeah, on the sure. screen. Yeah, um, yeah, no problem. And the, 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 the one to the right as well. Oh, oh well, yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure if I can show much more than that, but. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go into the, uh, with the white again, just a few more details. Go into that beak really pop the whites. And then there's a little bit of white on the edges of that V shape on the head. Now let's, um, let's use my favorite pencil, which is the colorless blender pencil. This is, this is like magic. Um, this really makes your artwork come together and blend the colors, which I think is key to doing a nice animal illustration is blending all the colors. And then you get that, um, that um, soft focus kind of impressionist painting kind of look, which I like. Just depends on the style you like, if you want to use the blender very much, but I think it does a great job of blending the colors together, uh, especially when you're just trying to create some texture at the beginning. And remember, you go back in after you blend it, and then you add more details, more darks, more lights, more whites, to really pop your details. So I'm just going in and it's okay if your blender pencil gets a little bit of flat on the end, that's actually uh, good for blending, but I, I'm gonna sharpen it a little bit, my powerhouse sharpener. Um, but I'm gonna go in and let's just blend, we're gonna blend the whole owl. Go on. Hey, Dan, while, yep. while you're doing that, we are halfway through the class. Okay, thanks. Um, now that we're halfway through, I just had a couple of Prismacolor trivia questions. Um, what, why is it so hard to erase Prismacolor software pencils? If you, if you think you know the answer, put it in the chat and, and Adam can, can um, see if he sees uh, the correct answer, let, let us know. And then the other question is, is it okay to put Prismacolor pencils and their microwave to soften the core. Um, let's see what people say. Those of you who've used Prismacolor before. So we're, we're going in, we're, we're softening those feathers and see how it's blending them together. It really helps create a painterly effect when you use the blender pencil. Sharpen our pencil. And you know, the, the longer you spend on your illustration, the better you can make it. We only have an hour today, but um, you know, more time, you can, you can really pop the details. We're just doing a basic illustration today just to show you how Prismacolor works. And then you can take those skills take your time and um, put as much detail as you want. Some people like to do, you know, photorealistic pictures of animals and birds. Other people like to do more impressionist, uh, kind of like me, uh, this depends on my mood. So I'm going in, 
we're just gonna go over the whole drawing really with our blender. See what this does is it just, it fills in the area. You know, a blender pencil is a great way to save, um, save on your pencils. So instead of using the pencils too hard, you can just take your blender and grind that pigment into the paper. That way you don't have to uh, use as much of your wax on your pencil. It really is a nice uh, addition to your art supplies. Hey Dan, we, we did yeah. get some answers back on, on your questions and it looks like the consensus <laughs> is a uh, wax and some people are saying oil based for the first question and it looks like uh -huh. um, the second question people are saying uh, not in the microwave um, for that one as well. That's great. Well, and they're absolutely right. These are wax based pencils um, and also uh, some people think you can put them in the microwave for a few seconds to soften that, but that's probably not recommended. Uh, what you can do is you can lay them in the window, a window seal on a sunny day just for a few minutes and that'll soften them up. And that's probably a much better way to do it than using the microwave method, at least from my experience. <laughs> Thank you everyone for answering those questions. The more you use Prismacolor, the more of an expert you're gonna become. Uh, and you'll learn all the intricacies of uh, Prismacolor pencils. So we're just going in, we're finishing up, blending the body, and then we'll go into the head of our wise owl. We're blending those blacks, those beiges on the body with that camouflaged feather look. Just get all that body feather blended. See how, and see how it makes it so much softer looking. It looks more like soft feathers when you blend those colors together. And then you can go back and you can add more details for each individual feather toward the end. Right now, you're just trying to fill in your mid-tone base color. That's the best way I can describe it. These are just your mid-tones of your bird. Okay, so now let's do the head. Let's go into the beak. Let's blend that. And see those little white feathers on the side of the beak? Let's kind of blend those in the direction that they lay. Let's go into that V shape and just blend that black. And up on the tufted ears. And then let's go into those eyes and blend those a little bit because we want that black. It's almost like a eyeliner. You're going in and you're you're just really popping those eyes with that black outline. And that black pupil is really shiny and, and round. So you wanna accent that shape when you blend it. Let's go into each of the eyes. Let's just take our blender. And like I said, what it's doing is it's grinding your, your, your wax pigment into the paper. And so it's really darkening it up. That way you don't have to keep going over it with your, with your colored pencil. You can just, um, you can just blend it into the paper. So we're gonna go toward the top of the owl now with that V shape around the eyes. Just darken that up. And the top of the head, let's just follow that line. And then see how it's just kind of blending the camo look of the spots on the top of our owl. It's blending it together. So you don't see any white then. What you can do is you can go back and add white with your white Prisma colored pencil. But it's nice just to blend them. You get a really soft, furry 
feathery look when you blend everything together. So, so now we've blended it. And now once you blend it, you can start going back with lights and darks like white. <clears throat> well, let's go back. Let's go back and let's lighten some of those details of the beak with our nice sharp white pencil. So you can really start to pop that shape of the beak. And then if you want to, you can go in um, and just make sure the pupil of the eye, make sure that really pops. And then there's white around the eye. You can start to, um, you're almost carving out the, uh, the white around it. And the nice thing about white is you can almost use white on top of almost any other color. Um, so after you blend it and you grind the wax into the paper, you can lighten up and you can show individual feathers and pieces of fur with the white. You know, and if you have more time than an hour like we have today, you can really add a lot of detail. Um, so let's go in around the eyes. Now that we've got our black and our browns, let's go in with the white. And then there's white at the top of the eye. <clears throat> and then there's white that define that V shape, top of the owl. And, and that white, there's like a little white tuft at the top of the ears. Um, it, it looks like horns, you know. They're, they're majestic looking birds, they really are. And then there's a lot of white specks in this camo um, kind of pattern on top of the head of the owl. So we're just going in and we're just doing little lines to show some of those details. It's basically just a combination of white and black and browns. And you can make it as detailed as you want. But we're just starting to really show off those details around the eyes and the top of the head. And then there's definitely some white specks also on each side of the head. So let's go in and add those white single lines that you see that kind of come down. It's almost like a majestic mane of a lion with these beautiful feathers. <clears throat> So now you're starting to see the white come out a little more. And then this area, yeah, let's, let's do the same thing on the left side of the, of the owl. There's, there's white specks here, there's some here. There's definitely a lot of white right here. It's almost like there's a single feather of just white. And once you put the white in, then you can go back and add shadows underneath each feather with your darks, with your dark browns and your blacks. So we're just going in and adding some of those white details. Okay, so now that we've added some white, um, let's go in and add some of the dark brown colors. Actually, let's go in with some, some black. If you, if you really wanna pop that beak, there's, there's two dark patches, a kind of an indent on the beak. And now that you've put your white in there, you can go in and start accentuating that shape some. So it's a matter of going in, once you've blended the whole bird, you're going in and you're adding individual feather lines around the eyes and around the beak. Just add some hatch lines 
And then you can add some lines around the, uh, the sides of the head, around the eyes. You see those lines. And it's, it really is intricate. The, uh, there's stripes, there's horizontal stripes, there's vertical stripes with these feathers. Um, it really is quite complex. So you can take a long time um, mimicking every single intricacy of the pattern uh, of this camouflage that this beautiful owl has. He's a hunter, so he has his camouflage. Um, so we're going back in and now we're, we're adding some lines um, to get that linear look on each side of the head. Now that you got your base color, you can go in and then that single feather, you can try to outline that a little bit and put a little shadow underneath it so it pops out. And then there's, you can show some detail of the, uh, the rest of the white feather below it. And, um, and let's go in now that we've blended, we can, we can darken up some of these individual feathers. So once you blend it, it kind of dulls the, the lights and the darks a little. So you can go in and add more. I think there's more dark brown on the right side. Like if you look at, your, at the photo, there's a lot of dark browns in this area. There's more blacks on this side. So let's go in and try to mimic each individual feather shape with our dark brown. Just to get that pattern look and it's it really is like an interlocking pattern of feathers that when they take flight turns into wings those feathers are so beautiful when they're all folded together because they create quite a, a camouflage pattern for the owl and they love to hunt at night I think that's when they mainly come out is at nighttime. So let's go in and add some browns on the left side. And then let's go in and add some brown lines that we see over the other lines toward the head area. And in here, It's just a matter of looking at the image, looking where your lights and darks are and where your lines are of each individual feather. And now that we've blended it, we gotta go back in and add some of that brown back to the top of his head. Creating texture is really a matter of um, a lot of lines and cross hatching and hatching to create that camouflage texture of the bird. <clears throat> After you blend the whole image, the whole painting um, drawing, um, you can go back in and, and add a lot of, of lines so that you can make out each individual feather. And once you get good at using Prismacolor pencils, you can draw all kinds of birds and animals. I like to draw dogs and cats too. Um, and you can do them as gifts. You can, uh, you can draw a picture of someone's pet and give it to them as a, as a gift for their birthday or something. So it's, it's a really fun hobby. It's very relaxing. You can go out into nature and take pictures of birds and animals and just go back and draw them. Try to do different types of birds. Um, you can take, you can get a pair of binoculars and you can go bird watching. Like I said before, uh, bird watching is a very popular hobby in the US. Um, 
So see what kind of birds you can see in your area and maybe try to uh, do drawings of those. Um, but once you start getting into animal illustration, it's a lot of fun. And a lot of the animals have very soft fur or feathers. And so you, Prismacolor is a great medium for doing soft texture like that. Um, and especially when you use your blenders and your white pencil. Um, it's great, it's just a great medium for that. And now that I've got a lot of lines, I think I'm gonna go in with my blender pencil. I think I'm, I might've went a little overboard on the lines. So what you can do is you can go back and you can blend some of those lines if you think you have too many lines and you can just soften them up. Sometimes all it takes is going in and just softening those lines with your blender pencil. Because if you, and when you look at the photo, if you look at the photo of the beak, um, it really is a lot of blended color. And especially the, you know, the white areas to the right and left of the beak. And so that's the great thing about our blender pencil is now that you have lines, you can go in and soften those lines, especially in your lighter areas, like your whites. So you can go in, soften those up, and keep sharpening because um, it's easy for your pencil to go dull really quickly. And sometimes it helps to turn your pencil if you went while you're using it, like the blender here, if you turn it, you can make the, the point last a little longer. So you just do a little bit of blending, you turn it, and then you don't have to sharpen it quite as much. Hey, Dan. Yes. Um, a question came through. Um, could could you use a, a Q-tip, for example, instead of, or I guess in addition to the blender pencil? Yeah, you know, I've seen that online. I think that's a great idea. Um, I've seen different people use Q-tips and really, I mean, it's very similar to the blender. You're just taking something soft instead of something hard and uh, blending the pigment. So I don't see why you couldn't do that. I think, I think other people have done that. So um, it just depends on what you like. I like the uh, colorless blender because it um, uh, it just gives me the effect I like for blending. But the Q-tip will give you a softer effect. So if you're if you're working in an area that requires a softer blend, um, you know, like maybe this area to each side of the beak, a Q-tip might be a good idea. Um, especially, you know, if it's if it's very soft. Um, but the blender pencil will work too. I think you just have to try different techniques and whatever works for you. Good question. So we're just going, we're going in and we're just adding, um, we're gonna go in and add some final details here as we're finishing up. Um, a lot of times what I like to do is I like to use the white at the very end. Um, now that I've gone through with some darks and some lines, I'll go in and I'll just take that white and pop it. You know, look, look how you can pop it on the beak. After you've added all those lines, you want to go in and just pop some of the whites over the top of the, uh, the darker lines. You want to get that furry tufted look with the white on the ears and around the eyes. That's a, that's a really nice detail. And then on the fur, of course, and the feathers, uh, you wanna you wanna just really pop those out again because once you've used other pencils, the uh, white is good to go over again and add more white details. So it's just a matter of layering of colors. And the more you go over it and add more layers of color, the more details you can get on your, your owl. And there is a lot of details to get because um, 
this camouflage pattern is very intricate. Um, but you can go into each individual feather and just pop those shapes with the white. And once again, you got to keep sharpening. But if you turn your point, you can make it last longer. So you, at the very end, you're just going in and you're adding some finishing details of white and darks. You're just adding those little details that just really make it come to life. Last time we did a cardinal, and this time we're doing an owl. Prismacolor is just so much fun to uh, play with. So once I'm done with a picture, what I like to do is I like to go in and maybe erase around the image because I usually get some smudges. Um, and usually, I mean, you know, Prismacolor aren't really made to erase that much, but usually you can get a lot of the, you know, the basic smudges off with your, with your Prismacolor Magic Rub Eraser. So you just go in and you just kind of try to erase some of those smudges, especially when, when you have a white background like this. A lot of times I'll do pictures and I'll have a colored background, so you wouldn't notice the smudges as much. But um, when you're done, you can just go in with your, your Prismacolor eraser and clean those areas up a little bit. Um, looks like we're getting low on time here. So uh, why don't we take a look at uh, what you guys have done? Let's go to the uh, gallery view. And if you wanna just hold up your, uh, your picture, let's just see what you've done. Oh, wow. Wow, that is beautiful. Look at all of those beautiful owls. Cat, that's, that's a lot of detail. Oh, and Kylie, I really like how you did those eyes. And Madeline, you, uh, you, really, you really made the, uh, the camouflage texture stand out. Oh my goodness, look at all these. Amy, that, uh, that, that color is gorgeous. Um, Oh, and look at uh, Selena, that, that is a really neat angle that you did right there of that owl. And it's cool how people did different angles. Um, Judy, that's a really nice angle of the owl. Oh, look at that detail, man. Uh, Mariana, that's, uh, that's a really nice illustration of an owl. And I like how everyone did the eyes. You really made the piercing orange eyes stand out. Uh, it's just great to see. Oh my, yes, see the more you, you use Prismacolor, the better you get and the more details you can get. Um, so, wow, that is beautiful. It's so great to see what everyone has done. Thank you for, for joining us today. And um, does anybody have any questions um, as we're finishing up here? I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions. Adam, let me know if you see any questions. In the meantime, um, a coworker at New Old Brands here, Laura Leanhouse, has a class on September 1st where she's going to um, teach folks how to use create, uh, create great signs for back to school with Sharpie. So if you want to create some really cool hand lettered back to school signs uh, with our Sharpie markers, uh, please join Laura on the 1st of September. I think it's 2 p.m. Central. Um, but Oh, wow, it's so nice to see everybody's work. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been a lot of fun drawing our owl. So um, pl please uh, keep using your Prismacolor pencils and the more you practice, the better you get. So thanks everybody for joining us today. I appreciate it.